Hello, and welcome back to the Irish Tennis Updates podcast. My name is Adam, your host. As the summer starts to draw to a close, it is time to look back at the summer that has been for Irish tennis, and also to look forward to the final event, well, not quite the final event, but one of the, the final events of the summer, that is the National Junior Championships in Fitzwilliam. To do this, I am joined by Mark Finnegan, and we look back at the summer. So far, we look ahead to the final week, also to some other things that will be going on for the rest of the summer, for the rest of the year. So my thanks to Mark for his time. I hope you enjoy this episode, enjoy the action in Fitzwilliam this week. And here we go. Here is Mark. All right, Mark, a big welcome back. It's been a while since we have caught up. So I hope you are doing well. And Fitz obviously coming up um, this coming week. So how's all with you and Irish tennis this summer? How is everything going? Adam, thanks for having me on again, and it, it seems like it's 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 forever since we last did one of these. And and um, to be honest, it, the summer's gone very quick too as well. And um, the weather hasn't been too bad, so I guess we'll take that. And um, but yeah, no, look, it's 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 exciting to have fits upon us. And um, and you know, it usually is the end of an accumulation of 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 a long Irish tennis tournament summer. And um, but I think the good news, which we'll talk about later, is that this calendar is actually allowing us to play a lot and compete after Fitz, which I think is great because um, Fitz is absolutely really important. It's our national championship. And, um, you know, it's, it's a culmination of a lot of, of events, of seedings and everything like that, but it's still just another tournament at the end of the day. So um, I think something really cool coming up for, for everybody to know, um, and I think Tennis Ireland will be announcing this very, very soon and doing some promo on it. Um, there's a gentleman from, from Scotland, a very famous guy called Chris Suter. Um, mm-hmm. And Chris is really good, but he's going to be coming in to do um, a player and club kind of in-person presentations. And I think this is going to be a really good one for, for parents. And I think this is going to be a really one, a good one for parents to get as educated as they can on, on what their role is and what their part in the process of their, of their, of their, of their kids' development is. Um, I know I'm going to be there. I'll, I'll be doing a small, tiny, tiny piece on how it applies to college tennis. But more importantly, I'm going to be there as a parent. And I'm excited to hear and listen to, to Chris. And uh, he's done a lot of uh, speaking around the world and, um, and hopefully learn myself from my, from my own kids too as well. Because, uh, you know, sometimes it is tough to know exactly what you're supposed to do and what your role is. But um, definitely there's a role for every parent. That's a great one. I, I know of Chris and I know he's, he's a really, really good coach, a really good guy. So hopefully people can check that out and, and, and make use of, of what he's going to be offering for sure. And Mark, yeah. just, um, yeah, so as, as we guess, move on to look at, at the summer that, that's been for, for tennis and I guess juniors, I guess, more so. But how, how do you look back at the summer, positives, negatives from the summer? How, how do you kind of reflect on, on how it's been so far? Yeah, so I, I've been fortunate. I've, I've gotten to a few tournaments, not as many as I wanted to get to. Um, I almost got to one every week. Um, what I did like about this calendar and this, this junior circuit was, I think it was really, really, really spread out really well um, a- across the country. Mm. And I feel like you know, I actually spoke to a, um, a, fam- a Dublin family who traditionally would not have played that much outside of Dublin. And they had one of the best experiences they could have had down in Rushbrook. And they, you know, they made a really great experience out of the tournament. And they had... Um, a great week and it wasn't just all about tennis and they look back on that with so much fond memories I think that's such a massively important thing that we sometimes miss out is with families and tennis players is making sure that no matter when we go to tournaments is that we create experiences for those players so they can love their tennis long term and yes it's all about sometimes being able to win the tournament but you know it's the things that go on after the matches and and before the matches that sometimes can make it special yeah you know for me the club's I want to say a huge, huge thank you to the clubs. I mean, they have been absolute warriors in this. They were given a very, very short timeline on being able to make sure that they were able to still request and do their tournaments. And they had all of these protocols in place. Uh, I mean, fair play to them. They stepped up and they were able to put on um, tournaments where every single week since June the 7th, we've had something. Um, You know, Adam, I had my tournament again. I was the first tournament to open up again uh, this summer. On June the 7th, we played um, 62 matches on three courts on three days on clay. And it was a basically, um, you never you never finish. You keep playing up to four matches. And someone was finishing last in the draw of 16 and someone was finishing first in the draw of 16. We got great feedback from that. It was full three-set match. 
Um, no 10 point tie break for a third, except for when we were in the back draw, really struggling for time because of conditions and weather. So um, I think that's a great format. And I think it's a great way to go about things. I got lots of people saying they like that format. So that's something great. I think everybody wins as long as they keep competing. So um, I think another huge positive is, is the fact that, you know, my turn was on clay. Um, and I think there was one or two other um, things that featured clay events. So Carrick Mines, I believe, um, and now Fitz. So that's a really big plus. And the fact that our national championships will actually for the first time ever be played on a surface for 18, 16 and 14 on a world surface, I think is going to be absolutely massive. I think it's going to change the, the course of Irish tennis. I think it's going to change the course of, of who wins the Irish national championships big time. Um, but it's absolutely great to see that clay. And I think now in every province in Ireland, we actually officially have at least one clay court. I know that clay court's a private one in Munster, but like at least there's some sort of clay all in the whole of Ireland. So, um, you know, I, I think another huge positive for me is the calendar is, is providing competition after FITS. So, you know, back traditionally after FITS, there would have been a bit of a lull and a stop in competition. But it seems like to me, we've got lots of competitions going on after September, um, including that senior open at Sutton, uh, which is always a great one. Again, on a clay courts, they got two clay there. And then obviously we hopefully will have the Interpros in early October, um, a couple of weekend tournaments down there in St. Anne's. Um, and then um, Wendy Burns, Malahide Castle, which I'm helping again, will be running a WTN UTR in that third week of September too as well. And um, so basically you can be competing all the way through September, which, you know, and then into October with Interpro. So if you're lucky enough to make, to make the team. So, um, you know, and there was some, some, you know, not such positive things, I would say. Um, in my opinion, the use of the 10 point tiebreaker has become a little bit too common for me now. And um, it seemed like every single tournament, almost except for last week at Donnybrook was adapting a 10 point tiebreaker. And, um, you know, but I just don't, necessarily think that's the best way forward for our development and um, especially when you have a no ad 10 point tiebreaker it just it's you know when we're thinking about developing players and they've got to go five sets eventually one day for 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 the highest level of davis cup or for um for basically for 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 grand slams i mean it doesn't make any sense playing a 10 point tiebreaker third i understand maybe if you're playing multiple matches um, and it's a, it's a compass draw and you're in the back draw and you're really running short on time. But, you know, if you're in a main draw, you, 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 you got to be going full three sets with the no ad. The no ad's great. It helps you develop. It puts you under pressure more. And yeah. it's still tennis. But with that 10-point tiebreaker, it does affect the first and second sets of how people play them because they know there's a 10-point tiebreaker for the third. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the length of tournaments, again, for me, you know, hopefully we can keep moving forward with, with condensing these these tournaments into a bit of a shorter, shorter, um, shorter week and playing two or three matches over the space of seven days in a draw just doesn't make any sense to me. And, you know, make the draws smaller and maybe make there to be two tiered draws like they sometimes do in France, and um, which is a great system. And, you know, finding a way where people have to be only on the road for like, say, three nights or two nights. And um, because sometimes, yeah, OK, from, if you're from Dublin, it's fine. You can get 30 minutes to a tennis center. But what about all the country people? They have to spend pretty much a whole week spending a lot of money basically having to go to that tournament. So we do have to get creative and figure out how we can make these tournaments a little bit shorter. And, um, you know, a three or four day tournament would be fantastic. The ITFs, they've gone shorter on theirs, th those times. And, and so there is ways of doing that. And, um, you know, I think the loss of the ITF junior events for the second summer been absolutely you know you know really really tough um on our juniors and it's kind of put us a little bit behind the game a little bit and um, so i don't know i mean that's something i would say is going forward here for the future if you're a club if you're a parent if you're a person that's willing to sponsor if we can get more itf junior events in this country it's going to be an absolute game changer for everybody in irish tennis so i hope that this is a time where we can really you know keep pushing those and and not not even be okay with three and i know tennis ireland are really wanting that they want to go to six to seven to even eight to ten like international tournaments and um, including tennis europe's and itf so and um, but we need all the help we can from the irish tennis community 
to make sure that we have to be able to have the sponsorship money or the club facility to be able to host those events. So, yeah. sorry, no, that was a lot, Adam. Yeah, no, 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 not at all. And I guess on that last point in, in the international events, it is unfortunate not to have them this year. And that is obviously something that we've spoken about and you know, Gareth Barry was speaking about of, of the importance of those. And hopefully that is something that can happen next year a lot more so. And another point you mentioned, obviously, on the clay and in, in fits, I think that's great to see. As you say, it might, it might affect who, who does well this year and maybe some people might get a little bit obsessed about it being a different surface. But I definitely think you know, going forward, you know, everyone knows the clay is the way to go. And I think that this is the way that clay will start growing a lot more as people seeing it in fits. Clubs will you know, start to need it more, that they'll, they'll see that. And I think that definitely can be only good for, for clay court tennis and tennis in general in Ireland for sure. And just before, Mark, we move on kind of to other points and, and to look a bit ahead to, to fits this week, I guess I'll just give a quick mention to, to some junior players who, who have been playing around internationally during the summer. Obviously, we didn't, as we mentioned, have the international events in Ireland, but there, there were plenty of ITF events, Tennis Europe events around Europe, around, well, around the world, really. And I guess mentions should go to people like Arthur O'Sullivan, to Freddie Murray, Celine Simoniu, again, has, has been in action a lot. Um, Roy Keegan, Nathan Slattery, a lot of people who have been playing around around Europe, I guess, and mostly, and, and that, that is just great to see that people are still getting their international tennis and, and having a lot of success. A lot of those players had really good runs in, in various weeks throughout the summer as well. So that's definitely a, a really good thing to, to see from, from that point of view. Yeah, I think Ashley O'Connor even won two, two doubles titles there mm. in Greece and, and Elena Carantelli also had a good performance there. So lots of, I mean, again, I think we've said this so many times is, the people who are out there traveling and being brave and 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 doing that is just you know we have to commend them because it is it has not been easy to do that especially from being from Ireland and being on an island. Absolutely. And and before just before we do move on to to look ahead to some of the draws in in fits, are there any other points from from the summer? Anything else that stood out to you for for just tennis, Irish tennis in general over the summer? Well, yeah, there's I mean there's there, there's definitely been some 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 cool ones. I think Celine has been a great to see. I've, I've never met Celine before, but you know, she did win a Group 3 ITF junior event, and it's been a while since we've had, a, a you know, a girl being able to kind of like do that. So that's been really cool to see. And I've known that she she represented us in Fed Cup ex- extremely well. Sorry, Billie Jean Cup, I should say. And um, But then, you know, I guess from my own personal side of, of guys who, you know, I've had a lot involved, but it's great to see um, the return of Julian Bradley back to Ireland and going to be finishing his dentistry degree here in Trinity. And, um, and it's going to be doing some coaching back here. So it's great to see the return of him. Um, and then I loved seeing David O'Hare come out of uh, retirement to be able to help that team basically um, get promoted this year and um, play doubles. And it just shows, again, the, the, the value of, of what he has for team. Um, and then probably a really cool one for me is, look, I played a, I played a small role as, as his college coach, but to see Joe Salisbury, um, be able to play with Andy Murray in the Olympics uh, in, 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 in this year was, was was kind of cool. And I think what's even even cooler for me is the week after I saw on his Instagram, he's playing club league club tennis for 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 his club back in London. Straight after that, and I think again that that value of team and it never leaves you. No matter how good of a tennis player you are, you've just come back from the Olympics of playing Andy Murray, and now you find yourself playing league for your for your in in your club uh, national league. So. Again, you know, I think that's something we talked about a lot, Adam, is, is the importance of being able to insert yourself into a team um, in this lonely sport of tennis to help you be able to just in, enjoy those, uh, enjoy your tennis for the long term and not make it always just all about you. Yeah, absolutely. No, team tennis, really great. And, and obviously, as you said, that those three guys you just mentioned all came through college tennis. And that is kind of a pathway that as you know as you've spoken an awful lot about is is really beneficial um and and mark i, I think we will move on just to look at fits i know that you have some kind of some notes prepared for for some of the draws so do you want to run through i guess some of the names to look out for what, what to expect this week absolutely yeah and we'll let's start with the 18 boys and we'll kind of work our way we'll work our way backwards and um, so number one seed for the for the 18 boys and, and it's well deserved is freddie murray and again another brave guy who's gone out there and made a made a semis of, of a group three ITF and, and, uh, and has done well in the group four ITF. So he's done well in this summer internationally, hasn't played as much um, on the domestic scene. And, um, you know, then we have Nathan Slattery, um, fortunate to get a wild card, hasn't played any really junior Irish tournaments the same way, but has won two Irish senior titles with the Euro playoff champion on the clay. And um, so, but uh, 
And then we have Dylan Lehman. Dylan's off to um, college in January. So he's actually getting to play the championships, which if he'd gone in, in the fall, he probably wouldn't have been able to get it. And he's had some good form. He's had a mixture of junior and, se and senior tournaments this summer. And he is the Ulster Open champion, which is great for him. And um, is also was the Euro playoff runner up against Nathan. Uh, Joshua Mackey then, the fourth seed, um, seems like he's struggled a little bit with injuries this summer, hasn't competed as much. Um, I know at the start of the summer he made a semis at Carrick Mines, um, but hopefully he's feeling healthy and he's ready to give it a full go on the, on the clay. Um, then we have Dylan Breen. Dylan Breen, I think, has had a fantastic summer. Um, I think he might have played the most matches out of anybody this summer in the 18s boys. Um, he's the Irish Closed Champion, which, which obviously is one of the biggest... Uh, tournaments in the country outside of the outside of Fitz and the National Indoors is probably the third. So he was the winner of that, which was great. Um, and he's up to actually as high as three in the country at the moment, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, Hugh Butler, it's been great to see Hugh back. Um, he's three titles. So domestically, I think he might have won the most titles this summer. And, um, you know, he's only lost, lost one match, I think, in the under 18s, boys. Um, and that was a really, really close one. So and um, he's shown some great form. I know he, uh, he's been practicing a lot on the clay courts because he's a member of FITS. And so I think that'll be a really, really, really good shout for, uh, for him being well prepared. And um, got a tricky potential uh, matchup, maybe if Zach Murphy gets through his first round. And um, Zach did battle a bit of injuries at the start. And um, I know he got injured in my tournament, but has, has, has been training a lot and is always great on the clay. And he's had two runner-ups and two events that he's played this summer. And, and then with Hugh O'Sullivan, fair play to Hugh O'Sullivan. The guy came right out of the gates after leaving search straight away and, and started competing again. He's competed a lot. And he's been very consistent with his form. He hasn't made any, um, he hasn't won any championships or any finals, but he's been always in around that semifinals um, or maybe one final, I believe. Um, same with James Brophy, been very consistent, played a lot of tournaments and has made three semifinals. Um, and then we've got Ethan Hans there down at the bottom of the second seed of the draw. Uh, Ethan, again, played a lot, competed a lot domestically, two titles and three runners up um, and has had a great summer too as well. Um, so and I guess, yeah, voice. great. I guess to, to look on to the, the 18 girls, that's brilliant. Yep, 18 girls. And so the one thing about the 18 girls we're noticing is there actually is quite a lot of girls missing from the draw. Um, I haven't, obviously, we don't see Celine Simonew there. Um, didn't see Rachel McCrum and um, Breda Brennan. I know Roisin Murphy's gone off to college. Uh, Breaches Pertick, didn't see her in the draw. And then uh, Megan Butler is obviously gone off to college, I think, too, as well. So that draw is missing, you know, a good six or seven girls that would be traditionally, like, um, you know, showing some good form coming in. They're expecting to at least make quarter semis or maybe even winning it, you know. So, but the number one seed, um, with that all being said, is, is Ashley O'Connor. Um, Ashing again, we talked about she won those two ITF junior doubles titles and, you know, got off a bit of a slow start, I think, in the summer, but is then the East of Ireland Open champion there last, uh, I think, two weeks ago. And she hasn't competed a whole lot this summer, but is always very talented and will always be a tough, uh, tough out to beat. And I know Lisa Ryan, very talented, a very hardworking girl. I know she spent a lot of time in Germany. So, again, we haven't really seen her too much domestically. Um, Roisin Moore, always uh, capable of, of, of competing very well. Um, Owen Ryan Bovey, she's off to America. I know she's had a tough um, summer of studying a lot, getting some stuff ready for America to be able to be eligible for the NCA. And um, she did make the final of, of the Irish Closed, um, but was, was battling injuries all the way through that tournament. Someone who I've been very, very, very um, um, impressed with is at Kira Hill. And she's had a great summer so far. Um, I remember seeing her back in my first tournament, June the 7th. I'd never seen Kira play, but very good clay quarter. Um, very talented. She's on her way to Durham, um, to university, um, after, at, the end of, at the end of the tournament, and she'll be going on to the English system, to university, which so it's great to see. Um, Julia Hamlin, always very consistent. Leinster Open champion. She's just competed a lot this summer. And um, probably, we should say, we should probably say she would have wanted to play a little bit better last week, um, losing a little bit earlier, but... And um, always, always is right there at the end of the tournaments, every single tournament. So um, Juliana Carton, um, the Euro playoff champion on the clay at the start of the summer. So that's a uh, good prep, obviously knowing that she'll be good on the clay courts. 
and um, hasn't competed a whole lot this uh, summer. And um, she did play last week in Donnybrook, losing in the finals to Louise O'Callaghan in a really close match. And um, Jesse Fitzgerald um, has been kind of consistent this this summer. She's made two quarters and uh, she's gone to the finals at the East Cork. Um, and I know she started off the year highly ranked um, in that under 18 girls. Um, and I know that she will be training a lot on the clay leading up into this. Um, Sean's in good form coming into this. Louisa Callan, um, like we said there a second ago, won Donny Brook last week, obviously on the artificial grass. Um, and, uh, you know, she's actually, I've seen her compete a lot this summer. And I've seen her basically get a little bit better every single week. And um, I know Paul Fitzgerald, I think, has been working a little bit with her and has been obviously doing a great job. Um, so then we got Camille McDonald. I haven't seen much of Camille this summer. Um, she was a Tremor runner-up. Um, and she's won two uh, of the 500 events, but I actually haven't got to see her compete that much. Um, Lucy Hogan, always, always competitive, always capable of, 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 of providing an upset um, and playing some great tennis. She's had some great results this summer um, and has continued to progress her tennis. Um, and then Kleena Walsh, um, the number two seed, three titles, two runners up and the, uh, a runner up in the Euro playoff on the clay. And always a great competitor, always playing a ton of matches. I think she's the person in Irish tennis, I think has played the most amount of matches this summer. And um, so, yeah, so watch out for her. Absolutely. That, 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 that looks like a great one. And, and I guess moving on then to the under 16s. Yeah, so boys 16s. Um, not that many people were missing here. Just Joseph Kalaitis. Joseph um, is now over in America. Um, doing his sports year in high school, um, basically uh, at the same school that Rory Hogan went to, Macaulay. Um, so it's great to see him over there, and it'll be great to see him get out of Ireland for, for at least one year and see how he gets on. Um, one person who's not in the main draw, who was runner-up at Donnybrook last week, and I saw him at Sutton too as well, um, is William Kell. He's in the qualies. <clears throat> I think you're going to have to watch out for William Kell. He's a very, very talented player. I think we'll do really well on the clay. Um, Jack McCarty is the number one seed. Um, Jack's in great form. Jack has played a ton of tennis again. It seems like these 16 boys, it's, they've been very competitive, all played a lot of tennis. Um, he's had three finals and a win in Shank Hill. Um, someone we need to watch out to as well, similar to Nathan Slattery there with the wild card, Sean O'Neillon. Sean, I know, has been training a lot in, um, in, in Spain and Soto. Um, I don't know if he's been competing a lot. I probably think he has been, but he's back and he's actually going to be uh, in that top half of the draw. Um, haven't seen too much of Jonathan Mooney um, play this summer, but I know he's been playing most of the tournaments, but he has the seventh seed. And um, Patrick Marsh, been very impressed with Patrick. I watched him back in Carrick Mines, competes well, uh, moves well. He's had four semifinals, two titles, um, and has had a great summer so far. And um, then we've got a little bit of a, a Christy Popperwell Lorca Lockery matchup. And um, so that'll be a really tight one and a good one. Both guys, you know, maybe struggling to find a little bit of form. I know Lorca has been struggling with injuries and, and uh, Christy started off the summer really well. And um, then we got Johnny Wilkinson, always impressed with Johnny. And um, big game. Um, he's been in good form, winning in Sutton and then a finals at Shank Hill lately. So he's bringing in some good form. I know he spent some time also training on the clay in, in, in Soto too as well. Um, don't know too much about this French player, uh, Alexander, and I, and I might even be saying it right, uh, Renegal, um, but he's from, Donny, uh, from, sorry, from, from, I think, Temple Oak. Um, I remember seeing him uh, when he was younger about two years ago and um, playing some great tennis out there at that, that, that Open in March. Um, but don't know too much about him, but it seems like he's competed very well this summer against and the majority of Irish tennis players. And I believe he obviously is Irish, his mom and dad are Irish, or, or at least one of them are too as well. And um, haven't seen too much of Daniel Murray, but again, another guy who's been out there, he's been playing every, almost every week, competing, making quarters and semis. Um, Jeffrey Daniels, a guy who's been kind of sneaky under the radar. Um, Jeffrey has been playing every tournament, just doing it in a quiet way. Um, and is always capable of, of basically pulling an upset. Um, so we'll see what happens with Jeffrey then. Um, Keen Hurst, again, competed a lot. Kilkenny champion, uh, been in a bunch of semifinals. Um, I know last week he had a really tough loss in the, in, in the semifinals at Donnybrook in a very close match. 
And uh, and then Liam Hickey is the sixth seed. Don't know too much about Liam. I know he's uh, been competing a lot. Again, another quarter semis kind of guy. Um, and then Owen Quinn, uh, good turn for him last week in Donnybrook. Uh, congratulations to him. Um, he got the title, winning that really close 7-6 in the third semifinals at the playing William Kellen in the final. And then we got Fernando Garcia Sieber, who has basically been uh, the majority of the time in fourth year in Argentina. So um, he had a win in Tremor, but it seems like he's been playing a lot of doubles lately. Um, but Fernando is always very talented and will always be, uh, be one of the favourites to, to take the title. So what I see with the 16 boys there is I feel like it's very, very even. And I feel like that every there's probably at least eight, ten guys there that we don't know how this is going to play out with, with the clay court. So it should be a very, very competitive draw. Yeah, and that, that's something, I guess, not to forget that all the 18, 16, 14s will be on clay. So it's something else that you, you really can't, you know, it's an important factor for these 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 draws. Yeah, and I'm really happy that, you know, Fitz decided to go with that kind of mentality and not like have it where, you know, randomly you're playing on a, an artificial one day and, and, a, and a clay because it is like two different totally games. So, um. All right, so it's moving on to the 16s girls. Um, you know, Zara Burns, congratulations to her um, finishing uh, as the number one seed uh, going into Fitz. Um, you know, fantastic summer, three titles, a bunch of semifinals. Um, a girl who's, who's dedicated herself to her tennis for a very long time, trained a lot in Spain this summer too as well in Soto. So I know she's put a lot of time and effort into her tennis. Um, Rebecca O'Mahony, who I think was uh, started as number one in the country, um, at the very beginning of the summer. She's had a very good summer, competed a lot with three finals. She's a Lencer Open champion. And so well done to her. Uh, Coco Lynn Brown has played a lot of tennis too as well. Fair play to her. Always competes hard and is always a really tough competitor. She's actually even played a bunch of all of the 18s girls events too as well. So she's been playing 16s and 18s and has been playing a lot of tennis matches. I, don't, I haven't calculated how many she's played, but I say there's a good chance that she might have played the most men out of any um, out of any Irish tennis player in the 16th. Um, a sneaky one here again. We mentioned her earlier with the with the ITFs. Uh, Elena Carantelli, um, not seeded going into the draw, but um, obviously had that semi final appearance in Greece in the ITF Junior events. Um, and I know she had a good performance last year um, at Fitz. So we'll see how she goes. And um, so. Not a seed, but very, very um, sneaky player. Um, Georgia Lestrange, um, I know she had battle injuries a little bit through the summer, but always a great competitor and always loves to compete. And so it'll be great to see how she shows in, in, in up and fits. Um, I know Grace Sargent, uh, a great competitor again, has had some issues, has had to go to a one-handed backhand. So fair play to Grace for still like, you know, persevering through that and learning how to, to go from a two-hander to a one-hander and to be able to develop that. So fair play to Grace. She's been very consistent with her performances, always making that quarterfinals and semifinals stage. Um, then we're moving on to Lana Wilkinson, two titles, including an Irish Close champion, um, uh, the same way, winning the, the, the third largest event of the year. So well done to Alana. Um, I know she uh, plays at a Carrick Mine, so she'll obviously have access to that those clay courts. So hopefully she plays well there too as well. Um, Quiva McDonald. Um, started off the summer, you know, maybe necessarily not having the greatest summer, but it's really turned it around really well. Three finals in a row, two titles, bringing in some great form into fits. And um, so well done to Quiva. Um, and then we got Sophie O'Hanlon again, very consistent, just like her sister, Juliette, plays a lot of tournaments, the Tremor Open champion, um, and she's going to be the two seed. So, yeah, so lots of lots of people there that that um, will be right in the hunt there for a title again like the simmer to the boys 16s you know i think that it's it's a draw that anybody can take um, and we'll see who takes their opportunities the best and handles the pressure and handles the surface the best and moving on to the girls under 14 event the first seed here is rachel deegan rachel has had a terrific summer so far she's won the events in shank hill in tremor also she won the irish clothes championships in rushbrook earlier in the summer so she's had a lot of success for rachel and she's also ranked number one in the country. And the first seed in Fitzwilliam. The second seed is Jenny Marsh. She's also had a great summer, winning in Sutton, winning in Carrigaline, and making the final of the Irish Close, where she lost out to Rachel. 
Jenny is ranked three in the country and is the second seed for Fitzwilliam. On to the third seed is Chloe Collins. Chloe has made finals this summer in Shank Hill and in Carrick Align, and she also won the tournament in Carrick Mines earlier on at the start of the summer. And Chloe is the second ranked girl in the country under 14. And finally, the fourth seed for the under 14 event is Sophie McCarthy. Sophie's had a really solid summer. She's made semi-finals in Shank Hill, semi-finals in, in Carrick Mines earlier on, also semi-finals in the Irish Clothes Championships, and Sophie's ranked number four in the country. So those are our top four seeds, some people to, to look out for in the, the girls' 14s event. And moving on to the boys' 14, the top seed is Alex Halpin. Alex, at the start of the summer, he started it really well. He won the event in Carrick Mines. He has since then, he's made finals in Shank Hill and a final in Lansdowne and Alex is, is ranked number one in the country. Second seed in the boys' 14s, Oliver Cradilek. Oliver has won the Irish Clouds Championships in Rushbrook. He won the event in Tremor earlier in the summer and he also made the final in Carrigal Line. So a really good summer, really good form for Oliver going into Fitz and he's the third ranked player in the country. Moving on to look at the third seed in the draw, Owen Jennings. Owen Jennings also as all these players have, has had a, a ter terrific form this summer, winning the event very recently in Shank Hill, making the finals in the Irish Close in Rushbrook, where he, he lost out to Oliver, and also winning the event in Carrigal a few weeks ago. And Owen is the second-ranked player in the country and the third seed for Fitz. And finally, for the boys under 14, Michael O'Leary. Michael is the fourth seed. He made the final of the event in Kilkenny earlier in the summer and also had some really solid semi-final appearances in Carrick Mines, in Lansdowne, in Tremor. So really good form for Michael as well. And he is the sixth ranked player in the country and, and the fourth seed in the boys' 14s. So moving on to look at the girls' under 12 event. And just to note that the under 12 events are the only events that are not taking place on the clay courts. They will be on the, the traditional, I guess, the, the artificial grass. Top seed in the girls under 12s is Kate Gunn. Kate has, again, had terrific success, played a lot of tennis this summer. She's won at the event in, in Sutton. She won the Irish Clothes in Rushbrook and, and other events as well. She won Kilkenny, she won Tremor. Really, really good, or, or the finalists in Tremor, I should say. Really good form for, for Kate this summer and is ranked number one in the country. The second seed in the girls under 12s is Isabel Harrigan. Isabel, again, she won the event in Shank Hill very recently. She made the final in, in Donnybrook just, just this week gone. Also a final in Sutton, a final in, in Carrick Mines. So really good form this summer for Isabel. And she's the second ranked player in the country and the second seed. On to the third seed, we have Lily Frawley. Lily, she made, she made the final in the Irish Clothes Championships in Rushbrook, which, which we've mentioned and, and where she missed out in the final to Kate, who's the top seed. She also won events in, in Galway and in Carrigal Line this summer, and she's the fifth ranked player in the country. And the fourth seed for the girls under 12 is Sienna McCarthy. She has won the event in Donnybrook just, just this week gone again, where she, where she did beat, beat Isabel. She also made the final in Shank Hill just the other week and, and won the event in Tremor a couple of weeks ago in the summer. So again, strong, strong summer for Sienna, and she is the third ranked player in the country for girls under 12s. And finally, the final draw to preview is the boys under 12 event. Uh, singles, of course, and the top seed here is Charlie Riley. Charlie actually won the under 14 event in the Lansdowne Junior Open a couple of weeks ago. So he was playing up and had a lot of really good success there. And he's ranked number three for boys under 12 in the country and is the top seed here in Fitz. The second seed in Fitz is Billy Colfer. Billy had a lot of success throughout this summer, a lot of winning. He's actually ranked number one in the country. He won the event in Shank Hill. He, he won in Sutton. He made the final in the Irish Close in, in Rushbrook. He also won Lands Anyone won Carrick Mines. He had a lot of success this summer. Really, really good form kind of throughout the summer. Started it well and carried it through, did Billy. So he is the second seed in Fitz. Third seed here is Patrick Breen. Patrick was the winner of the Irish Close Championships in Rushbrook, where he, where he did beat... Billy Colfer, who's the second seed. He also won events in St. Anne's, in Kilkenny, in Tremor. A lot of winning for Patrick. Great form throughout the summer. And he's the second ranked player in the country. And finally, the fourth seed in the boys 12 event is Dara Cantillon. Dara had a lot of success. He won the, the event in the East Cork Open 
He won in Carrigaline. He made the final in the, the Junior Open in Galway as well. And Dara is the fourth ranked player in the country. So as we can see across those draws, there's a, a lot of players who, who have had really good form this summer, a lot of winning, a lot of success. It'll be fascinating to see how the draws pan out during the week. I'd encourage you to check out the, to, to check out the website as the week goes on, see how things are, are going on. The very best of luck to all the players, of course, anyone who's entering, anyone who's playing, very best of luck. And, and that is it for this episode. My, my thanks to Mark Finnegan, as always, for his time to, to come on, for the time he put in beforehand and, and the time to, to have the chat today. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you've enjoyed listening to this episode. I hope you have enjoyed hearing about the summer so far in Irish tennis. Looking forward to the week to come in fits. And until next time, I've been Adam and goodbye.